You're listening to Impolite Society with Laura and Rachel. I thought it makes me so nervous. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <clears throat> every step you take, every move you make, every smile you fake, every bond you break, I'll be watching you. Go, can't you see? Okay, okay, okay. Now that's enough. I just really wanted to belt. (laughs) I'm sorry. I just, I've been wanting to belt all day long and I was going to cut it off after that, I promise. Likely story. (laughs) Rachel's karaoke podcast. Nope, that's not what you're listening to. This is actually the Impolite Society podcast. And who's this with me? I'm Laura. And this is Rachel, the one who's singing. And Laura's the one who's telling me to shut up already. (laughs) We dig into the taboos and the morbid curiosities and the things you should probably know by now in the uh, fun, oh, I hope it's fun, podcast. (laughs) We're fun. I can assure you. The more we say it, the more true it becomes. Exactly. That's actually a psychological fact. We're also going to silently put it in throughout the podcast, just like, you are having fun. So let's get into the topic today. And I mean, it's it's a doozy. And I feel like it's something that a lot of us do or think about, but are, are too afraid to talk about. So I'm going to start with a question. Okay. What's the worst offense somebody can commit in a relationship? Actually, you know what? My initial thought was to be cheating, but the next thought is stealing money. Mm. Like I've seen that on television shows. Somebody who spent their entire retirement account and didn't tell the person. I was like, oh, I would much rather someone have fuck someone else then blow my entire retirement savings <laughs> oh for sure for sure you can get some new dick you can't yeah. get a new 401k <laughs> exactly. but i will say those are you know some solid answers stealing your money cheating watching the show that you've been watching together without you but i will also say you're just outright wrong <laughs> oh okay you're very wrong <laughs> according to a lot of google searches i did according to the relationship advice subreddit the worst possible thing somebody can do to their significant other is to snoop through their phone. I kid you not. I spend a lot of time on subreddit relationship advice. Somebody will literally make a post and it'll be like, uh, I just looked through my boyfriend's phone and found that he was conspiring with some high level politicians to eat children under a pizza place. <laughs> oh, and he also asked this thought on Instagram for some titty pics. <laughs> and literally out of all that horrible stuff, the first thing people will say in the comments is like, well, you shouldn't have been snooping. Because ignorance is bliss. <laughs> well, yeah, no, they're like, well, if you thought something was wrong, you should talk to your child cannibal boyfriend. Like, yeah. Yeah, he's going to fess up to that. Yeah, so they can lie to you? Exactly. No. No. I've seen people be like, I found my boyfriend was having an affair. Like, in all honesty, like, that was a jest. Hashtag Pizzagate. Whatever. That was a (laughs) joke. But I've seen people post that. Like, I know I shouldn't have been snooping, but I found this, this, and this about my significant other. And it's just like, okay, snooping is nothing compared to the offenses they've committed. Yeah. Why are you even asking? Like, why are you prefacing it with, I should have been snooping? So what? You found the thing that you thought you were going to find. Good job, Nancy Drew. (laughs) Nancy Drew. (laughs) She found you and your Hardy Boys and all the Hardy Boys that you have hidden on your phone. All them Hardy Boys. Boys. (laughs) You know what I meant. The Hardy (laughs) Borats. <laughs> my phone. <laughs> Look at through my phone. <laughs> That's Italian. Oh God. All right. <laughs> we're we never said we were good at accents. Listen to like if you want to dig through the little archives, you can get to the, the genealogy <laughs> episode and we do like really bad Irish accents or <laughs> for half of it. But yeah, no, people have to preface it because they think they're gonna get fucking roasted by the edge lords in the comment section telling them that two wrongs don't make a right bullshit. It's because they're all dudes looking at a cover their ass well exact okay i shouldn't say that i mean there might be a little trend there you know who knows but i will say the theme of snooping and it not being quite above the line is very common i i did a quick little google search on it because that's you know how all my research starts with a little googly a little googly googly <laughs> whatever you don't go you don't go to the library and do your- I, I i like to go through the dewey decimal system and i gotta find my periodicals <laughs> Where I then, uh, you know, look for the latest peer-reviewed research. (laughs) But no, I start with the Google search, and it basically had one singular resounding message. Snooping and spying on your significant other 
is bad. And it's a sign that there's no trust and you're a horrible person and your relationship is trash and you're going to be single and die alone. Unless, and there's a big unless there, but we'll come back to that at the Ooh. end. But basically the message is, you, you're a, you're sad. You're sad. If you're a woman, and I mean, a lot of these articles are directed at women, not going to lie, but you're bad. You know, you, you suck. <laughs> you're bad. You're just like, you're a horrible person. And if you've ever looked at your significant other's phone, get fucked. And I will say, okay, vulnerability time. Okay. I am, or I guess should say have been a snooper in varying mm-hmm. capacities Throughout my life, right, in some of my better moments or, like, you know, lesser infractions, I've checked to see where my husband was to see if he was on his way home or if he's still at his friend's house or da-da-da-da, checked in on his location. On lower moments, I've, like, straight gone through his uh, WhatsApp messages and looked for that fucking secret calculator app that is a actual everybody knows it's a stupid secret folder that's password protected or you put your porn in what there's a calculator folder oh my gosh you gotta get with the times laura there's a secret app and it's like a second calculator that you have on your phone it looks like a calculator you put in your fucking equation and boom you unlock all the titty pics <laughs> Is the equation 80085 for boobs? <laughs> no, it's, it's 696969, obviously. Uh, okay, okay, all right. That one also tracks. Now I'm going to go look through my husband's phone to see if he has a second calculator app. I'll send you a picture of what the app looks like because I know it. Because I feel like I had it to lock up pictures, but I don't, if I ever was Your in the mood. Your own to- pictures? <laughs> I think that's what it was. It was like, oh, maybe I'll get into nudes. And I like downloaded the app in case I wanted to send a nude photo. But no, it never happened. No, never. Let's not take that out there. I've got one topless picture of me in my OneDrive in the secured folder. And it was because I was like, you know what? I'm fairly young. Let's document this shit. I sent it to no one. But this was for my personal use for me to look back 20 years from now and said, hey, my titties aren't hanging at my knees. This is what I look like at one time. They were pointing the same direction and it was up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was the one reason I took a picture. of. Well, there are some polaroid- Polaroids that have uh, since been destroyed, but that was when I was young and stupid. I actually, there's some cave art of me. Ooh. <laughs> you know, you're young, you're stupid. You find a Neanderthal out in the street. You say, hey, let's do this. <laughs> He's like, I want to paint you like one of my cave girls. That's exactly the reference I was going to make. I beat you to it. I beat you to it. <laughs> so these are all things, you know, it's really hard to snoop a cave art. I'll just say that. But it is easy to find the calculator. And this <laughs> happened. I was actually, this was within the last few years. I was on my husband's phone. Not snooping, probably. I don't know. We uh, we're married. What says is mine? Let's let's be real. <laughs> so I was looking through it and I was like, what? Oh, I know this app. And I went down there and I said, um, excuse you. What is this for? What's on this app? And we <laughs> talked about it. But anyways, so we put it out there. I've definitely, have you ever, you ever been a little looky-loo inside of your uh, husband's device? I yeah, I definitely have, and it was definitely when we were in the beginning of our relationship. I mean, we've been together for a thousand years, almost not quite twenty twenty years, um, seven eighteen years. So when we were in the beginning of our relationship, there was definitely some poking around on his computer. Phones at the time, <laughs> I'm really dating myself here. Phones at the time were more. <laughs> Actually, just to make phone calls. You snuck into his room and you hit redial. (laughs) Yeah. No, that never happened. But I definitely did some poking around on his uh, internet folders. And, like, I wanted to watch what porn he was watching or what if he was watching porn, which, of course, he was. He's a a man (laughs) in the internet. Obviously. You know? And just, like, I was more interested in that for some reason. I can't really tell you why that was, but... Yeah. I mean, there's a thousand ways that you can snoop on your your love of your life, and we'll get to that in a second. But that leads me to a question. The rude question of the day. Does snooping through my husband's phone... Does that mean that my otherwise completely happy and healthy relationship is doomed to fail? Well, let's find out. Let's get into it. Hey, 
Hey there, listener. It's Lara here to tell you about another podcast you should be listening to, other than Impolite Society, of course, and that is the Unethical Podcast. Have a listen. Let us know what you think. Hi, I'm Celeste. Hi, I'm Richard. Hey, I'm Christy. And I'm Tally. We're the hosts of Unethical Podcast. Every episode, we take a humorous dive into a case study that poses an ethical question, like, should mentally ill murderers ever be released? No. When a victim consents to die, is it still a murder? Yep. And does someone telling someone to kill themselves make you culpable if they do? Nah. We discuss what the outcomes of these cases are and what they should be, with a unique guest host every episode assuming someone is brave enough to join us. Richard needs some more testosterone around here. Nah, I think it's mostly coming from Celeste. Girls are mean. We will also explore the supernatural, the theoretical, and the conspiratorial. We'll talk about what's underground, what's above the sky, what's hiding in the dark, and what makes you see the light. What about what's in your closet? I want to believe. God. Damn, I love Dana Scully. You need a minute? Are you guys watching? Because that helps. I wish I was a tree. But when does a fun story become a dangerous influence? When is fiction actually fact? The last time I checked, those words meant the opposite. It doesn't matter. Our podcast is no holds barred, true crime, comedy, adult content, and definitely not for everybody. But like most people, most people aren't like can handle swear words and stuff, right? Am I right about that? No. No. But if you, like us, have trauma-fueled coping mechanisms, join us each week and visit a destination you can't unvisit. The dark side. You can subscribe wherever you eat your podcasts to listen. Follow us on Instagram where we post our teasers to guess what's coming next. And join us on Facebook to get involved in the conversation. Welcome to Unethical Podcast. Okay, I really got into the research this week, not going to lie, because my initial Google search did not turn up what I wanted, so I hit backspace. <laughs> I hit backspace, and I rewrote it, and I thought of different words. Okay, like, here we go. I'm almost busting out my periodicals. So, <laughs> the consensus from my first failed attempt at research was that spying is not okay. But that's not what I care about. And also, the research was stupid. I landed on websites like The Bustle. And I'm not bringing research here today. With, that's essentially a listicle of gifts. I'm sorry. Like, The Bustle, you're cute. <laughs> you got cute little kitten gifts of somebody sneaking around. And it was adorable. But it's also not good enough <laughs> for research for my podcast and my vast, vast listenership. I feel like there's a lot of, like, pop culture-y, like, B- BuzzFeed-style articles of the same, like, oh, when you blah, when you feel like this, you know what I mean? And just a bunch of gifts. Oh, yeah, that's 100% what this was, and I read yeah. it. I read all of it, and I was like, there's nothing in here that's helpful. So then <laughs> I was like, let me do some real research, busted out my glasses, like, pushed them up my nose, as I do, <laughs> and then I... Um, well, actually... Well, actually, so you say it's bad, but, well, actually, I want to know how common it is, which, if you've noticed, is actually the title of the episode, not, is it okay to spy on your spouse or your partner or your significant other, But is it normal? I mean, you know, there's a lot of things that we do, a.k.a. pump our bodies full of alcohol, uh, sit and eat, like, five salted caramels at once from Costco. I don't know anything about any of those vices that you speak of, Rachel. My body is a temple. (laughs) I You say your body is a temple, and I believe it because there's a lot of guys bowing down in front of it at three times a day. Oh! It's a temple of Baskin Robbins. That's what my body is. <laughs> okay. So I don't give a shit about if you should or shouldn't do it. We've established we are a slave to our vices. But I want to know how normal it is. Am I the only one chowing down on the, the Baskin Robbins of snooping? Or <laughs> is it something that we all do? Right. To begin with, I wanted to kind of describe the ways that you might spy on your sniffing another. And I just want to really want to reiterate this is not a how to guide. But if you'd like to see our how-to guide, please go. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you wanted to try one of these out, 
feel free. That's not on me. I'm just saying, like, if you've done it, it counts as snooping. Okay, go for it. I arranged these. Unlike necrophilia, I actually went through and organized them in order of of uh, severity. Badness. Yes. Okay. So first, creeping social media. Right? So Instagram, I don't know if they have it. I'm not a social media person. They used to have a thing where you could see other people's activities. People used to go in and look at their significant others, what photos they were liking. Oh, why did you like this photo of this girl? Why did you like this photo of this model? Da 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 da. I don't. That's not snooping. That's public information. Like maybe that's diving a little bit deeper, but that's just seeing what's out there publicly. That I don't. I am firm. That is not snooping. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And that's why I called it the stupidest form of snooping. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most basic and it's the stupidest. It's like the lowest level. If you're really going to get serious about it, come on, Nancy Drew, like invest some time and energy into it. Don't just go and look at his Insta feed. Yeah. Put on your uh, your cat your cat suit and really get to it. <laughs> well, because I can guarantee if he's like whatever he's doing in public view on social media, it's 10 times worse behind the scenes. True. And that's what you can find in the next category, which is snooping through personal <laughs> correspondence, right? So this is what we think of. This is like the quintessential snooper, snooping thing to do. That's looking through emails, if you are Laura's age, or text messages, <laughs> or group me, whether it's the device itself, like whether you pick up your sniffing other's phone and like do a little hacky, you watch them do their swipe, 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 and you can do that to get in. Or if you're really smart, you can hack their cloud so you can <laughs> the cloud man it's every snooper's dream so you can see what they're like what they upload to the cloud and you can see their text messages i got burned by that in a very stupid way when my i got my first iphone my um oh if my parents are listening at this point god bless you <laughs> i was an idiot my parents got me an iphone 3 in like the year 2013 which i don't know what iphone was on but i feel like it was like seven <laughs> so i texted my friend i was like oh yeah i got an iphone but it's just an iphone 3 because my parents are cheap and my mom got the fucking iMessage because it was connected to her uh... cloud and oh i got in trouble which to be fair that's fair. I mean, teenagers are dumb. and I mean, but also, I mean, that's just like, it's a teenage thing to say. Get over it. I'm not synced with anybody else other than me on the, quote, the cloud. Um, I, it is kind of a nebulous. Ha, get it? Cloud, nebulous. It, it's <gasps> Nimbus. It's hard. <laughs> is it Nimbus? What? A Nimbus is a cloud. A nebulous, nebulous is, I don't think that's a cloud. It's not a cloud. Well, cloud? Oh, oh, we got to shut this shit down until we figure out what the hell nebulous means. Nebulous. Def I feel like it's definitely a cloud. Oh, okay. You're right. You're right. But a nimbus is also a cloud. We, we It's a nimbus 2000 if you're a Harry Potter nerd. Mm, millennials. Okay. We got to stop talking. Laura. Okay. okay Wait, no, okay. no, 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 no. Real talk. Real talk for a second. We okay. got to stop talking about Harry Potter. Be Seriously? Yeah, because Gen Z, Gen Z, they don't give a shit. We're dating. I don't give a shit. We're dating ourselves with our, with our, no. with our off center parts or side parts and our skinny jeans and our Harry Potter. Like, this is a big thing I learned about recently is, well, you got a center part. So good for you for being so trendy. Uh, I do. However, my hair falls. <sighs> Such a cool girl. Okay. We established that we are both cloud proficient nimbus and nebulous <laughs> is a cloud they're both clouds okay i'm just what i was trying to say and everything got sidetracked <laughs> i don't know what i was saying i think what i was saying is that the cloud is hard to understand man so like things sink places and you're like how did that even get there and i i just think that the general idea is that don't put anything in your phone that you don't want anyone to see it makes me wonder how do cheaters get away with it nowadays man like it's so easy to catch people. Well, you know what they are? These cheaters are then submitting articles to fucking bustle, being like, don't <laughs> snoop. Snooping is awful. Don't ever do it. They're moonlighting between their jobs and their secret m relationships. They're moonlighting as content creators. <laughs> to push the narrative. Exactly. So tracking local. Location. I'm sorry. I fucking track location. I track location of my mom. You know, I just like to know where people are. I like to know if they're safe. If uh, my parents went to New Orleans, 
in November, last November, in the, in the height of the pandemic, because baby boomers be wild. <laughs> Good for them. They what? And I was like, what's going on? Why aren't you home yet? I saw you guys are still in New Orleans. I thought you were coming home yesterday. <laughs> I'm like texting them like, what's happening? You're what's like going a parent on? looking after their children. Oh, karma's a bitch, guys. They, uh, they turned tracking on me because I didn't text them when I made it back to college one time. And so it says it's a two-way street. So I track people. I track my husband. I still do it. I don't like randomly open the phone to say where see where he is but if he's out and you know i gotta i, I want to like when should i start dinner or when is he coming home i'll like just take a little peepsies to see where he is i mean honestly if we're gonna be real real talk be real vulnerability corner the times that i check his location the most is when he is picking up takeout to bring home. <laughs> How far away are you with my crab rangoon? <laughs> yes, bring that shit to me now. And I like, refresh, refresh, refresh. I don't do this. I don't care where Austin is. You don't care is. if Austin is dying in a ditch, bleeding in a ditch. I mean, like, if, he didn't tough answer, <laughs> if he didn't answer the phone, I would be upset. But he, I mean, he... Uh, I mean, maybe this is a generational thing again because my parents did not track me on my phone. If they could, God knows they would have. But it's just something that's never even entered into my psyche of saying I could do this. Oh, yeah. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. But you could check up on your friends and how they were doing if you were able to see cameras into their houses. This creeps me out. Why? 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 Why do you have cameras in your house? I don't understand well okay so i uh, here's and here's the thing so people have these cameras in their houses i feel very weird about it because they can see you at any time one time i was dog sitting for our neighbors and i i don't even know if i should say it because they my my friend over there listens if she's listening hi ez hi sorry hi. About this. i went over there and i watered their plants and i came home and like a Several hours later, I got a message being like, oh, you don't have to water the plants. And I was just like, ah, you're watching me when nobody super creeps me out. I am not OK with this. Like, unless I like have to sign a waiver before I come into your house, like the expectation of privacy like is gone. Yeah, no, because they, they'll offer. They'll be like, oh, you could come use the house. We got this good Wi-Fi. You could come sit in our sunroom. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it because you can watch me at any given point. Yeah. And like, guess what? Sometimes I pick my nose yeah. or sometimes I sit unladylike. Or I well, fart or I tell off color jokes or, you know, I scratch my vag. Like, I, it's just. And I just don't want anybody to see yeah. that because if I'm alone, I'm acting like I'm alone. Exactly. Anyways. You can always just turn on your home cameras and see what your spouse is doing. Yuck. And then here's the final and the most extreme option. And this is if you're, you just need to know if they're cheating on you or you're just a super suspicious psycho. Uh, and, it's, <laughs> and it is spyware. People do this. People buy spyware and download it onto their significant other's phones. If I thought 100% that they were cheating and I just needed a confirmation, I get it. I I get that. Well, I 100% agree because divorce is messy. If you have a family, if you have been together for decades, that's not something to treat lightly. You need to know before you make that call. Mm -hmm. So if you're just looking for the final nail in the coffin, yeah, more power to you. Yeah. And... And that was the reason the most people do the spyware. And it is beautifully, beautifully laid out and explained in this, you know, little indie podcast you might not have heard of called Reply All. You know, <laughs> if you listen to it, let them know we sent you there. No, I'm totally <laughs> kidding. But they have an episode about it. And it's episode 96, The Secret Life of Andrew Goldman. Have you heard it? Mm -mm. Have you listened to it? Mm -mm. Oh, it's good. Check it out. Let them know we sent I know. you. <laughs> yeah, just be like, oh, yeah, we heard about you. So those are all the ways you can you can spy on your significant other. And I just like, let me recap. It's creeping on their social media, snooping through their personal stuff, location tracking, home camera, you know, we can always spy. And then if you really want to be your Nancy Drew, your Hardy Boys. Grade A creeper. You download some spyware and you install it on their phone. 
Not a how-to guide. If you're suspicious, don't do any of those things. Just have an open and honest conversation. <laughs> Somebody will lie to straight to your face. <laughs> yeah, no fucking kidding. Okay, so we talked about we snooping. The bustle says it's not good. Reddit says it's not good. We talked about all the ways to do it. But obviously, if there's a lot of ways to do it, if there's fucking spyware developed for this. People are doing it. Yeah. How common is it? Yeah, how common is it? Let's get into that. The survey says, do-do-do, I'm going to kiss all the ladies. All, I mean, all the attractive ladies. <laughs> survey says, ding, 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 ding. It's pretty fucking average. Like, I mean, come on. We're not outliers here. We're, if you look at us, we're like the most average people you can meet. We had sex at 17 for the first time. <laughs> it's fine. We're average as fuck. Uh, but yeah, no, a lot of people do it. There's a couple studies out there, but they're by places with really weird fucking names so i don't know how reputable they are but i'm gonna put that out there so the first one okay. was done by whistle out nope that is not the secret correspondence lady of bridgerton it's whistle out not whistle down <laughs> whistle out sounds like a fart <laughs> That's what I'm saying. yeah it, it, it straight does it really does <laughs> I didn't look into what the publication's about. All I know is that they talked to 1,600 Americans. And of those 1,600, 50% had snooped. That doesn't surprise me at all. It's coins toss. The study also found that nearly half of women think snooping is okay. And one out of three men think it's okay. So again, women are more like, sure, fair game, snoop, mm -hmm. snoop, snoop. Men are a little bit more private, but that's because they probably have more porn on their phone. <laughs> they have a good reason to think that it's okay to snoop because less than half of them found anything incriminating, right? So only 57% found something that would point towards their spouse. Only 57%? I mean, I mean, I guess you round up, so it's a 60-40. I mean, that's a pretty yeah, even maybe, split. Maybe I should have flipped that. So snooping's okay because most people find something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's my bad. That's my poor reporting. Who are all these people that are doing shit and hiding these secret lives? I don't, I mean, I'm sure not all of them are um cheating i'm sure that can't because who has the energy 60 percent of people do not have the energy to go out and cheat i'm sure of that yeah but they're probably like looking at some kind of weird porn or they're probably like making fun of their girlfriends or their significant i shouldn't say girlfriends men snoop too and we'll get to that or like chatting with you know old high school flings or you know just some sort of unsavory behavior that you would not prefer in your partner exactly and i mean what else was facebook invented for but other than to reunite high school lovebirds <laughs> 20 years after the fact when they're both fat and unhappy with their lives. <laughs> and Laura's cheat around that was she just married that guy. <laughs> We're just... fat and unhappy together. <laughs> no. You just have no one to reunite with. <laughs> but it's hard to pin down. That's just what that study says. There was another one done. Because the other one was from like 2000. And it was from a few years ago. This is like hot piping hot it's steaming it happened in 2021 oh, and wow. it's from the very reputable source which it wasn't linked very often but it's probably because it just came out yeah uh 2021 bank my cell i don't know what the fuck that is but <laughs> bank my cell they did a study of a similar size 1600 americans this had a smaller age demographic right so they only looked at like 18 to like 35 Wherein the other one went all the way up to 55. I don't, they don't even know how to use phones. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What this one found is a little contradictory. They found that two out of three men had snooped. While only half of women have. That surprises me. So it's it's the men who are like trying to check out their ladies. What, what the fuck are they doing? But it could also be. It could be okayed by them. It could be woman approved. Because nine out of ten women, according to the study, are comfortable with their partner looking through their phone. Which, uh, are you comfortable with your partner looking through your phone? Uh, mostly, yeah. Yeah, I'm 100%. I got nothing on here that I would not want Dan to see. That's totally fine. Flippity flop, 10% less of men were okay with it. So eight, 8 out of 10. I think that's, again, hiding that 
that porn, I think. Yes, <laughs> yes. There's that, uh, the calculator app. It's in there. So men are actually also more likely to know how to get into their partner's phones. I mean, how hard is it? <laughs> I can't imagine. And again, maybe because I'm married, maybe because we're in that mindset, what's yours is mine, what's mine is yours. How, how do you not have access to your partner's phone? If you didn't, major red flag. Because Agreed. sometimes you just have to pick it up and Google when the takeout food place closes. Or or sometimes my phone isn't here and I want to Google some rando question that randomly popped into my head that we were conver- conversating about. Conversating. Conversing? Yeah, conversing about. <laughs> we were conversating down in Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so men are more likely to be snoopers in this case. They're more okay with it. And they're on a fucking mission. Men are laser focused it's probably because they're so good at math and sciences <laughs> they're laser focused they know how to get in the phone they know what they're looking for exactly because nine out of ten male snoopers are looking for signs of cheating which women are kind of the same a little bit less because 30 percent of us we're just being nosy we just want to see what our our booze are up to what our boo things are doing what they're searching i can relate to that i'm a little bit just nosy in general Yes, it's very much like I'm not looking. I don't think he's cheating. I'm just I just want to know what the fuck's going on in his life. It just in general, like it's I mean, when you're a part of any relationship, right, there are parts of someone that you don't see a lot of. And sometimes it's nice to know what that is. The fact that cheating is always top of mind when people are a little bit snoop, snoop, snooping is still there because you know what they go to. They know what the fuck they're doing. All snoopers. Are, we know. We know. We're not dicking around in your text <laughs> messages and your emails because that's, like, way too obvious. We go straight to the group me, straight to the WhatsApp. The ones that don't sink to the cloud. Exactly. And that's what the survey found, too, is that people, the majority, when they're looking for something suspicious, that's where they go. But, again, at the end of the day, whilst most of us were looking for something incriminating, only half of us found it. So half of the people who went to look for fi- look for something found what they were looking for. I mean, that, I guess that's encouraging or discouraging when you it's, think about it's it. It's really discouraging. Yeah. That means people are paranoid. Well, no, no, no. I was looking at like half, 50% of the time you're right. If you think your spouse is cheating on you, or your partner's cheating on you, like there's a 50-50 chance. I wish more people were wrong. Honestly, yeah. let's dig into um, outcomes here. Like so we talked about how much people do it, but let's talk about what that means for the relationship. Going back to my question that my relationship, we're happy, we're healthy, but, you know, I do I do a little snooping here and there. And I want to know if I'm going to have to get divorced because that means I got to start stashing money around the house. <laughs> So I want to know what's coming. I so I'm gonna rub my I'm gonna rub my crystal ball, and I'm gonna get it ready, and I'm gonna get it excited, and we're gonna see what happens. Okay. So according to the whistle out again, nothing to do with Bridgerton. The whistle out said he found that as a result of snooping, 38 percent of respondents got into fights or broke up with their significant other. With the uh, extremist option. The breaking up option only being 7%. So 7% of 1,600. I was going to say, I was like, that seems like a lot to group into. I mean, like getting getting into a fight, I was like, oh, okay, you know, but broke up. That's pretty extreme. And so I'm glad they broke that up into only 7%. Yeah, because there was varying levels. There was like a minor fight, a major fight, and then breaking up. So misleading. Can't trust the media. <laughs> The bank my cell study found that not this exact outcomes, but in their survey that one out of four men would dump a girlfriend for snooping, which seems a little hypocritical because 50% of men admitted to snooping. Yeah. Men, they want their privacy, but they don't think that the women deserve it. Whatever. Interesting. All of our lady listeners, like, write that down. Take a little note of that. Don't trust them. Well, yeah, they want to know what you're doing, but they don't want you to know what they're doing. But then, so this is just what's happening in the moment. I found a study by the University of British Columbia, and it not only looked at snooping, but it looked at the outcome. So it, it did like a 
full intensive talk to people and talked about the outcomes of their relationships. And from the 46 participants, they found out that it was kind of like a toys cost, right? Of whether or not the relationship eventually ended. So like, I think it was of like the nearly 50, 26% stayed and 20% or 26 stayed together and 21 didn't. And it was really just kind of flip of the coin there was other factors like how much their relationship was worth to them and they also looked at all kinds of relationships too it wasn't just romantic it was like co-workers and shit who snoops in their co-workers i know that's way way worse i mean when you do a, a small business or something your co-founder is really like your spouse like i've always heard that saying and i co- totally get that <gasps> Am I like your podcast spouse? Absolutely. Dun, dun, dun. Mr. and Mrs. Impolite Society. Ah! She said that! (laughs) But, I mean, I guess I could understand that in that scenario, but, like, I can't even imagine trying to snoop on a fellow coworker in my corporation where, like, we're cogs in a machine. I don't give a fuck what you're doing. Yeah, there's literally, it blows my mind. I would never look at any... Um, a friend, can you imagine picking up a friend's phone and going through yeah, it? Yeah, that would be very strange. That would be a deal breaker. I can't yeah. imagine anybody getting over that. But apparently half of the people did. Weird. Yes. Again, it comes down to, is the relationship worth what I'm putting into it, right? So if I feel like I need somebody in my life to feel complete or validated i'm gonna put up with worse behavior in their end of snooping and vice versa well it makes you think so like i said at the top that most of my snooping in my relationship was done at the front end of relationship of, of yes. the relationship and that's when most relationships are destined to fail i guess this is not surprising in the sense that you know it's kind of a coin toss it's like a coin toss of whether relationships succeed or not or just kind of a 50 50 shot Exactly. And that comes to my final point, right? Because we looked at the snooping, we looked at the outcomes, and the APA, not the Animal Protective Association, but a research institution that came up at the top of my Google search, they are so concrete that they weren't even in, like, I didn't have to click. Google just told me the answer. (laughs) But they said that 50% of American marriages end in divorce. And I didn't even try to figure out. I don't know if anybody knows how many relationships end in, in, in end up. Like they I've, end. I've definitely heard that uh, anecdotally before that it's 50-50. It truly is. So whether you're just starting the relationship or you've gotten married, you're, there's still a coins toss whether the relationship ends in divorce or not. I just feel like any relationship is a 50-50 shot regardless. If you look at your partner's phone and you find evidence of them cheating, I I, I just, it should end at that point, right? Well. So I I think the relationship is going to end at that point. Well, the cheating, maybe I should save this for the amusing sections. Well, that's coming up right now. We will be right back with our musings after this announcement from our audience. It's been another two weeks without a sponsor, but that's okay, we got someone better. And that is you, our listeners. A big thank you goes to Bender Zone for leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts. We think you're likable and clever. And our hometown shout out this week is the one and only Columbus, Ohio. You are a great city named after a bad man. And the birthplace of our national treasure, Guy Fieri. Now, we do realize we have had four C towns in a row, so if your hometown does not start with the letter C and you want to break the streak, be sure to hit download and tell your friends about us and have them hit download too. Or if you want to jump to the front of the line, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and we will be sure to give you a shout out. And, you know, we could even read special message you put in there. You know, we're not picky. We're just trying to, we're trying to help each other out here. We're trying to help each other out. As always, thank you so much for listening. Now back to those musings about snoopings. Let's get music. No, I I have so many thoughts about all of this. I kind of like kept it to myself. I think of snooping as more of a female thing than a male thing. 
I'm not sure where that comes from. I have been a snooper since I was a kid. So I there was no significant other to snoop upon. I'm just nosy. I, me and my best friend growing up, my childhood best friend, we would get in trouble because we would snoop in her older sister's bedroom. We would literally say, let's play snoop. And we would go into her room <laughs> and like poke around and let's look at stuff. Play privacy invader <laughs> exactly like i was just no play an essay if <laughs> you missed your calling <laughs> it was i've just been a nosy person my whole life and i guess another thing because when we first talked about this topic i thought i used to listen to love line did you ever listen to love line or is that kind of before your time Oh, that sounds so familiar, but I don't know. So it, it was Doctor Drew, who is now like a hack. He's a Dr. total Doctor Drew. Hack. Yeah, and, but he's on Oprah. He used to have a after hours radio show where he would answer like, sex questions, and they broadcast it on the point, and it was really interesting. And I really liked it, and I remember one caller that ca- called in and was talking. Was like, I was looking through my boyfriend, and and Doctor Drew was like. It's totally fucking normal. Like, especially for women. Women do it all the time. Like, it's totally normal. Is it cool? Eh, I'm not going to say, but it's totally normal. People do it. And so I've always thought of it as a female thing to do. And I I, I was surprised by the number of men that also admitted to snooping. But also, it's a little bit not surprising to me that men have more expectations of privacy than women. Because if you're the one doing the snooping, I feel like you're a little bit more, I don't mind if people look in on me. It's that treat others the way that you want to be treated. So there's more of a free flow of information. Whether or not that's reciprocated, I don't know. But it's what they kind of expect. Okay, so on the flippity flop, I another thing that I saw in my research that didn't make it into the show notes today is that snooping can be a sign of projection. Yes. If you are hiding something, you're going to assume your significant other is hiding something. So men who, I'm going to just say, are probably more likely to be hiding something because they watch some weird shit on Pornhub or they like naked ladies on Instagram. They're, they got something. You just it's, it's the internet. You know, it's the way it is. But... I feel like because that they're hiding, they have their own secrets. They assume that their female has a secret when really all she's doing is liking the same hot ladies on Instagram because she's like, oh, shit, I wish I looked like that. (laughs) I agree. That was another thing, oddly, that I learned from Dr. Drew on Loveline was that people who are constantly accusing their partners of cheating, they're usually also cheating. It's... That projection of if I'm deceiving you, then I must also be being deceived. You're projecting onto others what what you do. So it, it's just generally this element of distrust, whether it's earned or paranoia. I guess it's mostly earned. That got me down to the kind of one of the core questions around it. Why does it like why does it bothers people so much? Like there's not. Again, going back to the Google search, going back to the Reddit post, why is this the line that they are drawing in the sand? Why is snooping through my phone the worst thing somebody can do? And I found that there's this this like hypothesis, and it comes from a philosopher. So here we go. Buckle in, folks. <laughs> it comes from two philosophers, Andy Clark and David Chalmers. I don't know if I said that right. But they think these two bros had this idea in 1998. So back when internet's like little baby. And they called it the extended mind hypothesis. So that's like saying that our mind isn't limited to our head. It's all the things around us that are sister minds. In the most simple example, it's a post-it note that you stick on your door telling, you know, reminding you to do something. That's a part of the extended mind. But in the most complex part, It's the things that are around you that help you think, help you remember. It's your cell phone. So that when somebody is snooping, they're not just accessing your communication records. They are accessing your mind. And I think that's why it it rustles so many feathers is that 
when somebody looks in your phone, they're looking into your brain because our phones are, we re- they're always biased. We reach to them to search what we want to know, to record our intimate thoughts, our most secret desires that we Google late at night in an incognito tab. <laughs> it knows everything about us. And when somebody kind of broaches that, they're really crossing the threshold from just like snooping into mind reading. Yeah, I completely agree with this on multiple levels. So first of all, when we were talking about this, I was thinking, I'm like, would I mind if my husband Austin went through my phone? I was like, no, it wouldn't be some egregious thing. The only thing that I would be concerned about is that if I were, because I get mad, right? And I vent to my friends. Do I mean all the things that I say? No. Are they sometimes unnecessarily mean yes and and that's what i would be afraid that he would find would be some like ranting venting uh from me to my friend about what i was pissed off about something that i would never say to his face because it would be disrespectful and rude and that's not the kind of relationship that we have i even find myself when i'm texting someone i will censor it like nothing on my phone nothing on my computer nothing on my especially work computer is private so if i'm gonna really be 100 percent candid i'm gonna do it on a podcast that i then promote to as many people as i can (laughs) no (laughs) i'm kidding i think by the stats that we've learned about from the lady weatherton and the whistle down (laughs) and the phone my app survey whatever we talked about earlier (laughs) i think that they have proved that what you put on your phone you should not have an expectation that nobody else will see it yeah so i don't say shit on my phone that i don't that i don't want my husband to see because i figure he's gonna see it eventually that that is a wise way to go about it i'm not good at censoring myself i'm kind of an open-minded person and sometimes i'm like i shouldn't have said that but i i complete that's a smart way to go about it because there are times like i'll text someone and then be like did i send that to the right person i will go back and double verify because i'm afraid of whatever i said i would never want that other person to see that's a smarter way to go about it than my reactionary after I hit send, I verify who I send it well, to. Well, exactly. And it goes back to the thought process. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. And I mean- Well, that's a shitty way to live. I, you, <laughs> you know, I'm petty. I'm petty as fuck. And I say it, but I make sure to say it in person where you can always have plausible deniability. Paper trails. <laughs> Never have paper trails, people. That's your mistake. Never get it in a paper trail. It's good advice. I'm not good at that. I I get emotional and I'm like, but get on my phone. Laura wears, I'm mad. She wears her heart on her sleeves, and that's it's true. And that's what makes her good at impolite conversations while we have the podcast. Okay, <laughs> so um, I teased something at the beginning where I said that that unless so. Okay. A um being a snooper, a snoopy doopy, being snoopy Yeah, a little beagle. If you're a snoopy loopy, you should A really be like his cousin, this the guy from the desert. What was his name? Dave? I feel like it was like Desert Dave. Anyways, no idea. He had like a cool cousin and everybody should aspire to be him. But if you're a snoopy doopy, it says it's bad, right? All the bustle articles say it's bad. And the cure is being confident and self assured and having a good relationship and all these huh. things. And it these are on all the sites and they're very I mean, they have gifts of kittens and stuff, so I'm assuming <laughs> that they are targeted at women. Okay. And it just feels like another what well, strike in the self help category that we talked about with the self care and the other things that we've talked about where it's just like women are constantly told we're not good enough. Your natural inclination is to snoop. And that's not just because you're a woman. Men snoop too. Everybody snoops. But your desire to snoop if you're a woman makes you subpar. So you should be conquering that yourself. Got it. Okay, so snooping makes you insecure and pathetic, whereas you should strive to be this cool girl. Cool girl, yeah. Fuck cool girls. Yeah, that's a reference to um, 
Gone Girl? Gone Girl, thank you. You should be fucking murdering everyone. Anyways. (laughs) Or faking your own death. Yeah, that does seem like a lot of bullshit. Does a lot of this snooping probably come from insecurity? Yeah, it it probably does. But there's a reason why people feel insecure. It doesn't come out of nowhere. It's because they've been hurt either by this person or in the past. It's not something that just poof comes out of nowhere it comes out of life experience what you should say instead of saying oh you should be more confident and not need to stoop is that you shouldn't be dating people that you think are cheating on you you're better than that if you think this person is cheating on you fuck them you deserve a better relationship it shouldn't be put on you and saying you're flawed it should be saying you should be looking for better exactly and that comes down to a quote that the queen mother Queen Mother Oprah, (laughs) she has said, and I know this for a fact because it is referenced on 30 Rock, and 30 Rock is gospel. Damn straight. It is. And Oprah has said, you teach people how to treat you. Yes. So if if somebody is snooping through your shit, it's because you told them you're not trustworthy. Yeah, I agree. I 100% agree with that. That's all. That's all I have to say about it. I think that that's what it comes down to. Is is snooping, is snooping right? I don't know. Uh, you, I, on paper, no. But the world is a lot more complex than that. If you feel the need to snoop, yeah, sometimes it can come from insecurity of like your significant other's job and what they're doing there. But it's not a single offense, right? It's a yeah. It's a dual process. Again, it doesn't come out of nowhere. It, I don't mean to be like braggy about my long-term relationship, but out of nowhere tomorrow, I wouldn't decide, let me snoop through my husband's phone. Like there are, there would be inciting incidents to lead me to that place. And I wouldn't say that I would never go to that place because I'm, I don't know where life will take me. I don't know what instances will come my way, but it doesn't come out of nowhere. It comes from something. And I most of my my snooping on my husband did come through being in our infancy of our relationship and just you know you don't know where you stand with people like you want to make sure that that person feels the same way about you that you do about them and that's a way that some people go to to validate or to disprove that theory and is it right I don't know maybe not maybe it but it's it's, it's there. understandable. It's there. Exactly. Yes. yes. 100% agree. So we can talk about this all day and we can affirm each other all day. But my question at the top, at the top of the episode being like, is my relationship doomed? Because I have a little habit of like doing a little looky-loo, doing a little pixie. A little, a snoop a doop A snoop snoop a doop So I asked my husband himself in the flesh, the person that I have married and whose phone I had looked through. I asked him a question. I was like, would you care if I look through your phone? He was like, oh, yeah, you you look through my phone all the time. And I was like, how does that make you feel? And his answer is, yes, you use my phone. Does it bother me? Yes, because then I can't be using my phone to play games while you're on it. <laughs> it's just like, I want, I have this thing. I want to be able to use it. And when you're on it, I can't be. And honestly, at the end of the day, I think that means that if I've looked at it, if I've looked at text messages, if I've looked at something, I don't think it's going to affect our relationship. Sorry the bustle in your cat gifts, in your weird sneaky gifts. I think my marriage is going to be a okay I agree. I think that it is not a doomed relationship and that it is normal to be curious and to sometimes take action to look at what your spouse is doing. I I do. I do not think that it's the most horrible crime that can be done in a relationship. There are definitely worse things that partners can do to each other. (laughs) No, that's totally right. And I think that that's a good point to end on. Nothing more value can be said today. (laughs) We are devolving into nothing. I agree. Let's end this charade known as impolite society. I think I hear drums. Is there something you want to say, Rachel? Yeah, there's a lot we should probably say before we go to the drums, Laura. If you have liked what you heard today, 
please, please, please subscribe and and give us a download. Downloads are so important. Better than streaming. They are. So if you like us at all, please give us a download. And then follow us on social media if you want to see more of this. The Instagrams, the Facebooks. And that's all we got because yeah. I am very intimidated by Twitter. Twitter's a scary place. We like to stay away from it. Uh, you can visit us on our website, impolitesocietypodcast.com. And send us your own impolite questions at rude at impolitesociety.com. And if you send us a question, we might talk about it on our Fan Friday episode. So please send us your question. We want to know what you want to know about. We want to impolite society the shit out of it we want to know because we have just been answering our own questions and we know there's a lot of questions out there in the world so send us your question please rate review and download that's so important yeah we're having fun guys we hope that you are too (gasps) what's that are those the drums uh, 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 dance party, impolite society dance party. Uh, 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 uh. We are twerking a storm. Yeah, my butt, my butt flapping is making sounds. That's what it is right now. This is me twerking. This isn't drums. Those are just us twerking in synchronicity <laughs> that our ass claps. <laughs> Sounds like percussion. <laughs> I also have impeccable rhythm. So. <laughs> Okay. (laughs) Bye. Let's end this. (laughs) Let's end this, bitch.